If you're thinking about getting a new fixed blade knife, you might consider the Hessen knives. I think they're very well designed and built. Different sizes and designs of the knife serve different purposes. So I've got a lineup of Hessen knives here that you need to look at. I'd help you decide which one you want to get. Here we have the SE6, 5, 4, 3, and the Azula 2. And here we have all the corresponding sheaths. I'll talk about those as well. Although the 6 is the longest, the 5 is by far the heaviest. And the main difference is in the thickness of the blade. The 5 was designed for fighter pilots who might go down and need a survival knife. You can see it even has a divot here for using a bow drill to start a fire. The extra thick blade makes it a good hacker. So this would be the tool of choice for the heaviest duty survival knife you could possibly find. Down here, the Azula 2. The small size makes it a very good concealed carry or everyday carry knife, as does the 3. The blade on the 2 is a bit thicker than the blade on the 3. And so the difference in weight is not that great. In other words, the three is not much heavier than the two. And it gives you a longer blade. You can see it's the one I carry the most and has had the most action. These others are relatively new. The Azidlo 2 is a really good knife for someone with small hands, uh, a kid or if you just want to have something very small to concealed carry, something very small and light. It has this big hole that was designed for use with carabiners. All of these blades have some similarities and some differences. All of them have a fairly deep belly because the blade is fairly tall. This is useful for a number of things. It makes it a good skinner. And as I've demonstrated with the three before, it also makes it something that's good for carving longitudinally with your arm. In other words, you can get a pretty good grip for carving near the, near the tip. The advantage of doing that is it doesn't tire your wrist out as much as if you're carving this way. But it brings up an interesting point, which is that you might not want to dull the belly of the blade, which is more useful for skinning, and reserve this part of the blade for carving. This is also an easier part of the blade to sharpen than the belly. All of these blades have a flat grind with the exception of the five which has a saber grind. This part of the blade is the same thickness all the way down to this point and then begins the grind down to the cutting edge. These other blades are a flat grind all the way from the spine to the cutting edge. That makes the blade come to a more acute angle. Instead of an obtuse angle like this at the cutting edge, you have a more acute angle, so you can get a better edge on it. All of these are made from 1095 carbon steel. That kind of steel is very good for getting a good edge. It's relatively easy to sharpen. It's tougher like less brittle than most stainless steels. It does tend to rust and so they have this protective coating that is very tough, very durable. You can see I've chipped it away some on the three. That's from batoning. All right, let me point out some of the differences in the choils. The way the finger choil is designed has a great impact on the way you use the knife. All of these knives have a pronounced finger choil at the base of the shoulder, except for the five. So here's the shoulder, here's the finger choil on the six. Here's the five, this is the shoulder, and there's no finger choil. This part of the handle is called the keyon, and its purpose is to keep your finger from slipping onto the blade. I want you to notice that on the Azula 2, the finger choil is behind the key on. On the three, the four, and the six, the finger choil is in front of the key on and 
right up against the cutting edge of the blade. So the two is designed as a better carving knife because you can get a good grip on this knife with your finger fairly close to the cutting edge but still protected by the key on from slipping onto the cutting edge. On a smaller knife like the three, I've noticed if you've got kind of pudgy fingers, you can get very close to the cutting edge there. And that's a very sharp part of the blade, so you have to be extra careful when carving with these. The six has a broader finger choil, so it's easier to get in there and keep your finger away from the cutting edge. All of these handles are made from micarta, with the exception of this SE4. This is a special edition of the SE4, which is a venom green with a G10 handle. The difference between G10 and micarta is simply the material that is impregnated with resin. All of these are impregnated with epoxy resin. Micarta is an epoxy resin impregnated in paper, linen, or canvas. So this is linen micarta. This is canvas micarta, which gives it a little more coarse texture. G10 is epoxy impregnated glass fiber. The G10 is the most temperature and moisture stable, but none of these have ever failed to perform the way I need them to. A lot of other materials become very slippery when wet, especially when wet with blood. Micarta resists that tendency very well. It remains grippy, even when it's wet. Here's the pommel on the six. Here's the glass breaker pommel on the five. A glass breaker is available on the other knives as well, except for the two, I believe. Here's a sharp tip pommel, but it's not a glass breaker. This is a rounded pommel on the four and a rounded pommel on the six. The way you use a pommel is as a weapon or as a tool. This is great for cracking shellfish or nuts or breaking up clods and clumps of, of dirt and material without damaging your blade. Because the pommel has a hole in it for a lanyard, if you're gonna do any very hard beating, you might want to avoid using this part of the pommel and use this one instead. On the five, even though it has an even bigger lanyard hole, this piece of metal is just so sturdy that you can probably beat anything with it without damaging it. When you buy your SE knife, it comes with a corresponding sheath. All of these are excellent sheaths with very good retention and come with very useful clips that do the job very well. This is an accessory clip I bought for the SE3 so I can wear it in a horizontal fashion on the belt instead of vertically. The sheath on the five has an adjustable tension screw. All of these sheaths have very good retention. This one allows you the flexibility of adjusting the amount of tension from very loose to locked in and nearly impossible to remove. To tighten this retention, you slide this screw towards the handle of the knife. And to loosen the retention, you slide it towards the tip of the blade. All of the sheaths come with a drain hole, although they might be configured a little differently depending on the design of the sheath. On the two, the drain hole is not so apparent but you can see it right inside here, inside this lanyard hole. I meant to mention regarding the handles that all of these scales are replaceable. If you're looking for a fixed blade knife, you've got a lot of choices. I've got a lot of other knives I like. Uh, one of my favorites is Bussy. All of them are handcrafted. Each one is unique, and that's part of the interesting feature of Bussy is that every knife really is unique. The Essies are more mass produced, but th that's not a problem. There's no compromise in terms of quality. They're very well thought out. So if you want a piece of art, 
then you can go look at a bussy. If you don't need that feature in your knife, I don't think you'll ever be disappointed with SE knives. I don't get anything out of telling you this. I don't get any special compensation from SE. If you go to my website and then click on a link to one of these knives at Amazon, then I get paid a small commission, but that's true of any other link to any other brand of knife. I'm not getting any special compensation from Essie. I tell you about these knives because I like them so much. It's just my personal opinion based on experience and comparing them to other brands of knives and talking to people who have used knives. So this is my honest, unvarnished opinion about Essie knives. I hope it's been useful to you as you go shopping for a new fixed blade knife or put it on your wish list for Christmas or a birthday present. Father's Day is coming up. You might want to consider that. There will be more information at the blog, survivalnewsonline.com. I hope you'll go and take a look at it. If you are considering buying one, feel free to click on one of the links. It won't cost you any extra, and it will give me a small commission at Amazon. I hope you have a great day. I'll see you at the blog.